and welcome to video number six yes 51 to 60 questions out of a hundred questions by the time you go through all of these hundred questions that i'm giving to you in the, in the next few days before your exam as we literally count down six days to that writing that b1 paper trust me you'll be able to remember a lot and you will meet many many if not all of these questions on your exam paper so let's go 51 it says you should state and explain the rose black spot uh, how the symptoms and um, where it can be how it can spread and how it can be controlled now the rose black spot obviously is a fungal disease which um, affects rose plants and it affects them by causing dark or large purple spots on the leaves and stems of affected plants it is worse in warm wet places and it spreads through spores so spores that are produced can fall on the ground and even stay on the leaf and, and stay on the ground for a long time until the rainy season returns and it can re-affect plants which is why one effective means of treating is to remove affected plants and leaves and burn them promptly now uh, sulfur in the air is actually a good control for this for generally for fungal infections but now with a lot of uh, <clears throat> reduction in the sulfur in um, the uh, um, fuel that we used in cities you have a lot of these uh, rose black spots occurring in cities because the air a cleaner which is a good thing but there you go it also causes another problem then 52 is about how malaria is spread now malaria is spread by mosquitoes mosquitoes are not the are not actually what causes them mosquitoes are vectors they are vectors that carry the plasmodium which actually causes malaria now malaria can be prevented by taking anti-malaria medicines and jabs say you were going to travel to a place that's very warm and mosquito infested you want to have those jabs be injections before you leave <clears throat> also by using uh, a treated net that is sleeping in treated nets or putting the nets um, in doors and windows if you live in infected areas and then clearing out bushes and obtaining any standing water bodies like in containers and open water if you remove all of those things you'll be able to reduce the breeding ground for malaria for for actually the mosquitoes and then they will not be able to uh, transform the malaria plasmodium from an infected person to another so those are some of the ways to present that and it says uh, the next question 53 it says what are human physical barriers against disease infections the skin is a big one the skin and you have the mucus in the respiratory system respiratory tract that you have in your throat and your lungs now those uh that mucus is very important because what it is is it traps germs that you swallow or that you inhale and what happens is uh the cilia the hair that line your respiratory tract will sweep them off into your your stomach and then obviously it will not cause a problem because it will go with the rest of your undigested food out the hair in your nose also help to trap some um, disease uh, germs that uh, disease uh, microorganisms that could have affected you also tears the tears in your eyes yes they're a good thing for you they contain some enzymes called lysosomes we actually can break down um, and uh, bacteria and other microorganisms and then the stomach acid plays the same role as well but what about when these diseases get past this first line of defense you have the white blood cells how they how they destroy or protect you against these pathogens is they ingest them they eat them up and then they produce antibodies to destroy particular pathogens what that means when you get a reinfection then they can identify them and kill them and then they also produce antitoxins that can neutralize the toxins that are released by pathogens vaccination actually involves injecting a dead form of a pathogen which then enables your white blood cells to develop pathogen uh, uh, um, antibodies so that if this particular uh, pathogen reinvades your body in the future your body is ready to kill them that's why 
vaccination is very important for children helps them to build immunity against um, future attacks or future infection by these uh, pathogens how do antibiotics and other medicines work to kill bacteria they actually can kill the bacteria outright or work against their growth once bacteria do not grow they cannot function they cannot cause the disease all right now remember i've written this in red because it's very important antibiotics do not work on viruses no they don't all right and then the question 59 says uh what are the steps in uh, uh, developing a new drug i have a full video on that so i am not gonna go over that again but i just highlighted some of the parts there if you want to go over them but i actually have a, a full video on how to it was a question about how to develop the drug against ebola and it can be any 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 um, infection or any disease actually the steps are basically the same for developing and making available the new drug now question 58 ties in with question 59 in a way because um, it's on the higher by the way and it's Kotok asking about monoclonal antibodies well monoclonal antibodies are very interesting because they are just one type of antibodies that are developed to target a very specific type uh, to have very specific anti antibodies to attack a, or destroy very very specific cells now your body would be able to develop antibodies as we know however you, the you, the quantity of antibodies you need you might not have your body um, white blood cells able to develop them in that quantity and fast enough so there is a method or procedure that's used to generate or produce monoclonal antibodies now a mouse is injected with the with the desired <clears throat> We, what you desire to desire ant, ant, uh, antibody that you need to create and then the B lymphocytes are taken from the mouse and is fused with uh, cells from uh, div fast dividing tumor cells in the lab and then that fusion will re reproduce what we call a hybridoma hybridoma because it is a fusion between the cell that you've taken from the mouse and the one from the fast dividing tumor now the good thing about this is they can then begin to divide very quickly these hybridoma cells can divide really really quickly and produce clones and clones and tons and tons of the antibodies that you actually need now in pregnancy testing it is very useful because a lot of these um, antibodies can pick up very specific hormone that's um, high in the body of a woman when she's pregnant now when those uh, that hormone is picked up and the these the, the the antibodies that can detect that hormone is in the section of the pregnancy test equipment then there will be a color change so that's a way that it can be used but as a sysma if you want to ask a sysma question you can post post a request and i'll do it because there's actually a sysma question that i've done with a student before but this is remember this is just a quick overview like is, these answers are supposed to be one line and that's why i don't want the videos to be too long and then question six is a plant defense mechanism they have physical defenses which is waxy cuticle which would stop uh, pathogens from entering the pl the leaf at all and then this waxy cuticle will also ensure that water runs off because if water does not collect on the leaf then microorganisms or pathogens will not find a place to breed and infect the plant then they have chemical defenses against pests and pathogens e.g if some plants produce antiseptics which will destroy pathogens they produce poisons that will keep pests far away and some of them can actually destroy um pathogens as well then some produce uh quinine i put quinine here very specifically because apart from it being useful to the plant quinine is also useful to humans in medicine or medication all right i hope that is helpful i know it is actually helpful that is question we went to questions 51 to 60 the next video is 61 to 70 and that would bring me to a conclusion on the aqa checklist 
because for the other 30 questions i'm going to just pull out questions from the edistel exam board paper one i'll just concentrate on six mark like questions see you soon